Hello and welcome to this video from Client Engager. My name is Johan Gori and I'm here today to bring you the third update in January 2023 that's about to land on your practice management software, Client Engager. Over the last week or two, our team have been working really hard to implement lots of ideas that have been coming in from our users. User feedback is essential for our product to improve to make sure it works for you and your firm. So make sure you're always feeding back to us and we'll action it as soon as we can. A lot of these things have been requested over the last few months and we took advantage of a gap between two major projects to be able to implement some of these smaller changes for you today. So the first big update area in this update is checklists. What we've been doing is just tidying them up. So when you now go to checklists, instead of having a drop down box, you can see all the different checklists and you can see you can edit, you can see which ones you can create, which version you're on for each one. So it's just a lot easier to see and to use checklist features for your services now. The more advanced update to checklists comes when you go into a client. So if we go into our client engager, we've now got an item down here called tailored checklists. So this now gives you the, NA, uh, the ability to do a few things on a client specific level, which you couldn't do before. So you can either use the default checklist or you can now turn off a checklist for a specific client. If you don't want this client's service to have any checklists for any reason, you can do that. But more importantly, you can now tailor a checklist to this client. And to help with you populating that, we can go to add a new section, and we can import a section from a checklist that we want to do quickly and easily by just ticking which ones we want to import. And that will make it really easy to import the bits you want from your generic checklist into the client's specific one, but also then you can still add the specific sections that you want to add. All you do then, once you've done your added the customization that you wanted for this specific client, is you press save, and that's it. You're now using version one of the specific checklist, and you can tailor that and edit it as you go, and it'll create different versions for you as normal checklists would. But if you decide, actually, I just want to go to my generic checklist, that will then bypass the specific one that's tailored for your client and go to the normal one. Or you can click, again, no checklists. So that's been a very regularly requested feature to be able to have checklists that are A, easy to build out and have the import feature from other checklists, but also to have them tailorable to each client within Client Engager so that your workflow and your checklist for each client's specific service is tailored to them specifically, so staff members know exactly what they're doing. Our second update today is in settings. There is now a new section called document layout. A lot of our feedback said that they didn't like the logo being the size it was or the location of it. So we've added a bit of, added a bit of customization here. First of all, you can decide whether you want the logo that you've uploaded to your settings or if you want the just the practice name on your documents. You can then specify how big you want that logo or practice name to be, whether you want it to the left, to the center, or to the right. We've also moved the footer settings from within settings to document layout. So you can now decide which, doc, which bits and your details you want on your document footers that will be issued on your letters of engagement, etc. If you tick a box that hasn't got some detail in it in your settings, you'll get a big red sign that tells you you need to go and put information there. And until you put your information there, it will not appear on the footer. So that's our second update, a bit of an update on how we present and how much customization we give you to style your documents how you want to style them. Our third update today comes in the form of notifications. A lot of users have fed back that they'd like a notification telling them when a document has been uploaded by a client. So now, when the document is uploaded by a client, you're going to get notified here in your notification bell. And when you then click on that notification that tells you there's a document uploaded, you'll be taken straight to that document that's been uploaded. So not only are we notifying you that a client's uploaded something so you don't miss it, we're also giving you a really nice one-click shortcut to get to that document so you can view it straight away. Our fourth update is in placeholders. So if we go into settings, and we go down to custom fields. And if we select, for example, an estimated client annual turnover, you can now decide whether you want to have this in a placeholder for format or not. So what this means is that in your letter of engagement, 
or your email covering your cover email with your letter of engagement, you can pre-populate it without having to do any effort yourself. You can just use the templated pricing factors in there. So you might want to say in your letter of engagement, we're going to deliver these services based on these metrics. By doing this, you're going to give yourself the opportunity to go, well, it did say in the letter of engagement, these pricings were based on your turnover or the number of employees. These factors have changed, so we now need to discuss your pricing and go forward with that. So each pricing factor that you want to be included will now be marked yes or no, and you can choose whether a pricing factor is included or not. And then when you go into your template, so once you've gone through your settings and you've tailored which pricing factors you may want to be visible to a client on their letter of engagement or their uh, cover letters or emails, you go into your letter of engagement, potentially under scope of services, I would put this, or you could put it under the fees section, and I'd put the, I might, I might put it above the pricing at the fee table. I'll put pricing factors there. And that would then import that information for your letters going forward. Again, this was another feature that was requested by our users. They wanted to be able to detail the pricing metrics that they've used to help the client understand how we've got to the prices we have. And it also gives them the ability to go, well, you've now exceeded this. You've now got 11 employees instead of 10. You've now got a million pound turnover instead of a quarter of a million pound turnover. We need to discuss the pricing of services now going forward. Pricing factors that come through will only be the ones for the services that you've turned on. So if there's a number of employees sat on the pricing factors page, but there hasn't been a payroll service turned on or anything relating to the number of employees, the number of employees will not pull through into the cover letter in this bracketed area for pricing factors. And the fifth update in our third batch of updates for this month is in our how we display users. So we can now go to all jobs and you can now tell quickly and easily by a list of who's archived. So this is an archived user is a user that's no longer in the firm potentially or no longer has access to the to client engager. So you can go through and check if there's anyone archived. Same principle happens in our settings on services. So if we're in services and we want to assign this default to somebody, you can't de assign it to someone that's greyed out or archived. So that was a request from a lot of users just to tidy up and make sure things, people weren't being assigned jobs that they couldn't do because they were no longer with the company. So as you can see, five fantastic updates there. This is the third batch of updates we've had this month. We're developing Client Engager at a real pace at the moment. Any feedback, please do send it in because it's this feedback that steers our roadmap. It's the feedback that allows us to improve the product to meet your needs. And all five of these updates were based on client feedback. So it's all about you and how we can make the product better and more functional for you and your teams. I look forward to going through more updates in the near future. We're now embarking on some big projects, including our work with Zama, the AML software, and Timworks, the messaging software. So we're looking forward to getting those updates in, but it does mean that they are big projects and it will just take us a little longer to get those done. So we might not have another update video for a couple of weeks. Hopefully you've enjoyed all, this, all these updates. Any feedback, please do send it in.